ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our seminar on on the future of the internet my name is michael roseman and on behalf of qt um, and my dean simon kaplan who unfortunately couldn't make it this morning um, i'd like to welcome you to this session and it's about the vision but um believe me uh what we talk about today are not just kind of visionary dreams um they're, they're emerging realities um and and we are here right now at a point in time where the train is running quite fast and we see a true transition uh, new web browsers are perceived as operating systems. An iPhone might be a nice piece of hardware, but it's really the door opener to what's called the Apple Store, a whole marketplace full of emerging services. There's a long tail of service providers. And what we do right now is we don't see just the transition of what we do um, at one place, shifting into the internet, we see true innovation. We see mashups, we see items merged together, uh, leading to true innovation, and we see how um, the boundaries of companies, regions, countries, uh, legislative uh, rules are disappearing. So today we want to talk about this kind of context, we want to talk about visions, um, and we talk about, as I said, emerging realities. And, and today you are uh, in a very fortunate situation to be exposed to two true global thought leaders in this area. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's a great pleasure and honor for us to welcome one of our adjunct professors. Lutz Heuser is the head of SAP Global Research, he's a vice president Chief Development Architect at SAP. Uh, he's affiliated with us since many, many years. He's affiliated with universities in Park Rye and two universities in Germany, Darmstadt and Dresden. Uh, he's widely known not just only for his role of managing SAP research, but being a true visionary and thought leader and driver in the areas that are around what we call the Internet of Services, the umbrella term that summarizes what I just talked about, and what complements it, what we call the Internet of Things, where we try to make the gap between the world that we see in bits and bytes in IT and the real world a bit closer and build up awareness about what's going on in the real world. Uh, he advises the European Commission on the IT strategy. Uh, he moderates uh, significant think tanks around the globe, um, and I'm quite sure you will um, dramatically enjoy his presentation. Um, and I talked about mashups, so today we have a true lecture mashup. Um, in between, we have uh, Max Mühlhäuser. Uh, Max Mühlhäuser is a professor since nearly 20 years at the Technical University in Darmstadt, which is just south of Frankfurt. Uh, and he's globally known for more than 220 publications related to distributed multimedia software engineering, mobile commerce, and computer added learning. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lutz Häuser, who will start this morning. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everybody. Actually, Michael uh, summarized my presentation. We could finish now and start with the question and answers. No, seriously. Yeah, thank you uh, for the opportunity to be back here uh, as an adjunct professor of uh, QUT. It's always a great honor for me to have the chance giving a lecture. And uh, particularly, this room uh, has, of course, some historical means to me because I got uh, the honor uh, provided here in a nice function a couple of years ago. So returning to that uh, room remembers me. The talk of today is entitled Vision of the Future Internet. Future Internet, you may say, uh, what, what a new term. I mean, Internet is always future and there's always an Internet, so what's a future Internet? But this term was coined in the last couple of months in Europe as a term to indicate that we consider a revolution to happen to the internet, which I would like to share with you today. And uh, I have asked my colleague, Max Mühlhäuser, to uh, join me in this, giving you one particular aspect of this future internet, then in uh, some more depth. And we would try to finish up as early as possible to allow for question and answers, because I think this topic deserves question and answers, and it's not so much about uh, uh, one-way lecture from my side and from Max's side. So let me talk about briefly about the vision that is uh, behind that, then going into some more detail about what is intended to be the future Internet, although Michael already summarized it very nicely and covered it largely already. Uh, I still go into that with some more depth. And I will uh, finish up with an outlook on how this future Internet will significantly impact economy and industries in particular, 
Some of you who may have attended yesterday's function on the opening ceremony of the Smart Service CRC may will see that uh, I will refer to some of the topics I mentioned yesterday. So the vision, the vision that you can see here is not uh, just my vision, it is the summary of the activity uh, that uh, we continue, uh, that we um, executed earlier this year as part of the ISTAC, Michael mentioned it, I'm the chairman of the IST Advisory Council of the European Commission. That council is the only formal council that the European Commission has to listen to and to respond to. And we are in charge of providing recommendations for the so-called seventh framework uh, prog work program and the most important related funds to it. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about 2.5 billion euro, which translates to uh, a little <coughs> bit more than 3 billion Australian dollars. And um, as you can imagine, it's important that the guidance that we provide allows uh, to do research in areas which have a chance to impact the economy in the future. And this is the outcome of it, and I would like to go through that briefly. Um, so the future internet is covered by the first two uh, lower layers, <coughs> and that uh, again is separated in two parts. One is the future network infrastructure, and uh, the future network infrastructure is considered to be um, a place where what we are talking about for many years, the anytime, anywhere, for anybody and anything is becoming reality which means we have a clear indication that we have a network convergence going to happen where we will simply access each and every device that is networked uh, through some IP uh, protocol. Um, the discussions have not been started on whether that means IPv6 or whether that's a new uh, protocol to appear, but definitely there is uh, room for discussions about what will be the next a network infrastructure with respect to uh, network protocols. Secondly, and that's a topic then later on that uh, uh, Max will deepen, is the question of the Internet of Things. As Michael already mentioned, it's a topic of real-world awareness. And uh, the uh, vision here is that these things will be interconnected, but also will be connected, uh, as Michael already stated it, with the business processes and the related software behind that. And uh, with that, we should be able to reach out to any place, to any object, to any human being, of course, using such an object. And we should be able to access uh, these uh, nodes uh, through some kind of internet protocol. Of course, what we need is a core int internet infrastructure and the related services to that, which have to be defined. One of the biggest topic, or two, mention two topics here. One topic is about the address. How do I reach that object? And you, you, I guess you are familiar with the discussion going on. What to do with the IPv4 addresses once the uh, last uh, blocks of them have been sold, which is predicted by late 2010. Uh, will there be an eBay for a uh, IPv4 addresses, or will there be finally the uh, inroad for IPv6, or is there some magic other thing going to happen? And there's a big debate going on. I don't know how much it's happening over here in Australia, but uh, in Europe, this is a very heavy discussion because um, it, uh, it is associated with the socioeconomic aspect on the question of do the poor have to pay for the addresses while the rich got them for free? Um, simply if uh, uh, resources get scarce, they get more expensive, right? And the next billion internet users are not the richest one. These are the ones from the emerging economies and from the developing countries. So how to deal with that is a big topic that people are looking into. So both from a technical side as well as from a socioeconomic aspect. Nevertheless, uh, there has to be a service that allows me to access uh, that uh, um, or get access to that uh, particular node uh, in a um, transparent manner. The network address translation mechanism won't work in that context, otherwise uh, objects that are moving around among 
different uh, network domains couldn't be addressed accordingly or uh, in a way 